Okay, so I'll give a, a little um, demonstration on using some of the NICER sample data. And so in the in the slide show here, there is a link to the um, the NICER sample data page, uh, where you can find a lot of information about all these products and and the uh, the sample products themselves. Um, and so all the product specifications are on the right here, and then the the links to the products are are here, and um, and then so back in in OpenSAR Lab. Um, once again, if uh, hopefully you've all started your uh, your M6A large Jupyter Lab four single user profile, um, and when you when you land on the uh, on the in the home directory here, you want to open up the workshop Jupyter books directory, and then the NICER EA workshop 2024 one recipe book, and then we can open up the table of contents, and um, and so in the NICER resources. There is also a, uh, a link to the NICER uh, sample data site here. And, and then you can open the NICER sample data notebook. And so once again, this is, has been uh, you know, saved with all of the outputs in place, but um, I do find it confusing to run through a notebook that has its outputs in place um, uh, because you never quite know where where you're at with the with the numbering in the code cells. Uh, you don't know if it's it's hard to tell if you've run it already or not. So I'm going to come and restart the kernel and clear all these outputs, and then start from uh, from the beginning. And so once uh, in yet another location for the for the NICER sample data, uh, a link to the NICER sample data page, and then there's also a link to the L1 and L2 um, NICER ATBDs. And so we'll start off by uh, importing all of our, the necessary packages. And I, I'll also note that um, once again, just like every notebook in this in this recipe book, this, they all use the NICER early, uh, the NICER EA Workshop 2024-1 um, kernel, which you can build using this create Conda environment notebook here. Just run these three code cells and you'll end up with that environment, um, which will allow you to import all of these software packages. Okay, and so um, so this this notebook covers all of the L two and L uh, L three products. Currently, there's only one you know one sample L three product, which is the the soil moisture product. But we'll start here at the beginning with the L two. So uh, this is the 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 geocoded um, SLC, and we can uh, down that download that directly from the sample data site using requests and. We should be able to see that this has in the NICER directory here. Yes, it's just downloaded this sample H5 file, and um, and so then we can we can load uh, this file in using the using H5 pi. So we're just going to do with H5 pi H5 pi file, and then pass the path to the file and open it in read mode as H5, and then. Um, and then you'll see that we've defined some paths here to uh, locations for both the, um, the the raster layers that we're after and also some metadata that we need. And, <clears throat> and I identified the path these paths um, using uh, H H5 view that um, that Rudy just just demonstrated. Uh, you know you can you can look at them all programmatically in Python, but it's just it's it's much easier to to open that GUI and just see a nice um, a nice uh, you know graphical um, depiction of the of of the file structure um, and you can pull these paths out very easily that way and so once you know where the things are that you're looking for you can just um, load those into um, into Python data structures and um, and so for this particular product it didn't really make a lot of sense to plot it because it's a, it's um, complex data so I just loaded it into an x-ray data array and you can see here um, that it's now loaded into this data array. And here are the here's the, the are, are the um, dimensions, the extents of the of the data array, or the shape rather of the data array. And you can see that this is um, you know we're we're seeing all of the NAND values, the, those those border empty values around the actual data in the middle. But you can see that it's a NAND plus NAND J. So this is this is the complex data here, and it also it's a, it identifies it as a complex sixty four data type. Um, and so to actually see what one of those uh, one of those data points looks like, I just found one somewhere in the a random place in the middle of the in the middle of the the raster there, um, just to uh, to see something other than a, than a NAND here. 
All right, and then moving on to the um, the the gun W. So this is the level two phase unwrapped interferogram interferogram in uh, geocoded coordinates. Uh, and so once again, we will download this the same the same way. And shortly, we should see that appear here. Here it is. So sometimes the uh, the file browser doesn't update immediately. And so there is this little refresh button here. So if you ever suspect that something's been downloaded, but you don't see it yet, you can always click this little refresh button. Eventually it will pop up though. It may just take a few seconds. Um, okay, so once we've downloaded that in a, you know, in a very similar way, I just, I used HD or H5U to, um, uh, to, to identify all the paths to the, to the, the data that I needed. And then we can um, plot the unwrapped uh, interferogram. So I, um, I, I have this little colorized function here. So this was actually taken from um, one of the uh, uh, one of the sample notebooks, I believe, in the Dolphin repo, which is part of the um, the NICER, uh the the ICE framework repo, which there is a link to in the workbook. Um, and that is right here, the ICE framework GitHub repo. So I'll plot this and apply a color scale to it. And then um, there was a question in the in the QA earlier about how to um, how to output these layers to GeoTIFF. And so uh, we'll use rest Rastereo here to um, to output this to GeoTIFF. Uh, note that we we do need the um, the shape of the data and um, and the projection and uh, uh, the uh, the geotransform. Um, and so we've retrieved all of that information here. Uh, oops, not there. Sorry, here um, from the uh, from the H five file. And so with that in hand, we can output that raster to GeoTIFF and we should be able to find that now. Oh, there it is. Okay, yes, there is the unwrapped GeoTIFF. All right, and so these, um, you know, all of these sections are, are very similar in, in organization. Um, they, they load in the data. So this is the level two pixel offset offsets in geocoded coded coordinates. Um, and I've also linked all of the product specifications here next to each, each section. And so we'll go and grab the metadata and the raster layer that we need. And then we can plot that. You'll notice that there is not a lot shown here. Um, and that's because this is a, a relative product with a with um, a reference in a secondary scene. And both, um, both scenes used for the sample product were identical. So there's there are no offsets to show, but um, but you can see how the data are organized, and um, and you can still load them and plot them and and write them out to uh, to GeoTIFF, much the same as if they actually did contain uh, some uh, you know something slightly more useful to to look at. And um, let's see. Then there is the the level two SAR covariance product in geocoded coded coordinates. So we'll download that. and then load it in using H5Pi. And we can plot the covariance. Oops. And there we go. So the handle to make this bigger. Okay. So if you ever have a scrolled um, a, a, a scrolled output cell in a Jupyter notebook, you can um, just extend it with the little handle here. Um, you can also set uh, make you can you can change the metadata on that on that code cell to take away the scrolling um, or add it. And this is a, a pretty useful tool if you have a code cell that um, that throws out a, a lot of output. If you're downloading you know hundreds of products and it's um, it's it's just taking up your your entire notebook. Uh, you can just open, click the click this these little um, these little gears here on the right side panel, 
and then look at the advanced tools. And then in the cell metadata, there is this scrolled true. And so you can just set that to false if you would like to not have it be scrolled. And so now the scroll bar is gone and it displays it in its entirety. All right, and then we'll output that uh, the covariance to GeoTIFF. And then finally, the, um, the, the level three sample product, the soil mo moisture product. Um, so we'll load that in and then read in um, a, a few different layers that are, are available. Um, so there are several different algorithms that are used to produce the, the soil moisture maps uh, for this product. And so, um, and those are all provided in that H5 file. And so here I'm just going to, um, to plot all of them alongside each other. And you can see that the results do vary based on the algorithm. And finally, we can write those out to GeoTIFF. All right, and um, and then perhaps um, I'll just show that we can we can uh, download one of these and and open it up in um, in QGIS. So I'm just going to download this, and oh, I should have started QGIS ahead of time. This may take just a moment to load QGIS. Uh, you can also load um, layers directly to into QGIS from H5, but you have to do it as a vector layer. Um, and uh, it seems that um, QGIS is a little bit finicky. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it errors out. <laughs> so um, it's it's probably uh, it's probably better to convert to to GeoTIFF if you're going to be working in GIS software. Um, all right. Am I sharing my entire screen? Can everybody see um, QGIS, or are you only seeing file uh, the um, my web browser? QGIS is visible. What's that? It is great. Thanks. Okay, um, so I've got QGIS open. I'll open up a new project and. Here, I'm just going to take this interferogram that I've downloaded and plop it in there. And then let's see if it is located in the correct spot. So I'm just going to add a base map. And it is, we can see that um, that here, here is the scene over Rosemond. And so this is a corner reflector site. I believe um, the corner reflectors of these might be done right there. I'm not, not entirely sure. 